Indeed, uh, it's, a, it's a great pleasure because I see that uh, we are somehow connected in our industries because uh, some of you love art. Uh, I mean, all of you love art or, or would like to know more about art or, or already involved in art. And um, what I'm going to share uh, later on is just, uh, it's from my experience and opinions derived from my own experiences. And um, yeah, and then I think uh, we shall go ahead and then uh, later on, after the sharing, we have some Q&A and then uh, yeah, just feel free to ask any questions because uh, uh, I look at it as an exchange uh, indeed, yeah? So great, so now we shall start. So, um, cannot be a career, an investment uh, brought to you by Rainmaker. Uh, please allow me to introduce myself uh, a little bit more because uh, what I'm going to share later on will be uh, related to my introduction. Mm -hmm. So I'm Hui Fong. I won two awards in Italy and I um, also uh, write poetry and uh, have my own books. And at the same time, I'm also an art educator. And I founded Hui Fong's art gallery during the pandemic because uh, it started with, um, because uh, I have been more active in Italy Singapore and China before the pandemic. China not so, but uh, China starting to. But before the pandemic, I've been, I had been active in Italy and Singapore. And during the pandemic, I realized that uh, we could only get um, onto the virtual platforms uh, with my friends. And so then I decided, and also with my friends, uh, we decided why not uh, we introduce um, we, I start to introduce an art platform instead of, uh, but at that time I was already running my atelier, which is an art academy, um, which nurtures art learning in children and adolescents. Uh, we have been, for the atelier, we have been uh, working hand in hand with my friends in Argentina, uh, as well as in China, um, doing uh, art projects for children. So before that I was, um, more active in the atelier. And then uh, during the pandemic, we decided uh, we would run Hui Fong's art gallery because um, it was just right, the resources were all there. And um, it is just uh, to implement it. And uh, I've been very fortunate to have painted the founding father of Singapore, Lee Kuan Yew, and as well as prime ministers and presidents of Singapore and Prime Minister of Malaysia, as well as our Sultan. So I speak seven languages, and that is also why um, I have friends, uh, art circle friends in Italy, um, and that is why we decided to also run Art Chat with Weifo, a platform that bridges artists internationally. So um, before we, before I started this, and even while starting this as a career, I've always been asked, and I think uh, this question might not be, um, might also be familiar to some, uh, when people often ask us, so how do you make a living? And indeed, I think uh, art, art is, a niche um, product. I would like to think of it as a product, as a branding. And uh, so how do I make a living? Uh, of course, uh, in the creative industries, there are all sorts of creative ways to make art into a career. Uh, I will talk about the career path first. 
And then the second part, I'll talk about the investment. So, um, and I choose to do this fashion because I feel that um, for some of you who would like to know more about investment or who would like to, um, yeah, who would like to know about investment um, would somehow like to know about the artists and the careers. So I think that it is interconnected. So I feel that creativity uh, does not limit just uh, to one area. So let's say when I'm a painter, I don't just paint because I can creatively use what uh, the, the resources within me uh, to enhance uh, what I currently do. So when I paint, um, I also uh, edu uh, have an art education, but at the same time, um, I also run an art talk and, uh, and so on and so forth. So let me uh, go ahead with this. So I like to think that my art is my branding. And so it's like um, when you buy uh, any artist's artwork, in fact, the artist's work is the artist's branding. And so um, these are the points that I apply during my art career. And I feel uh, they are also uh, quite uh, being able to be resonated. So uh, first of all, I think uh, the, uh, the notion that people would always have regarding artists are uh, uh, they paint uh, as they like, they paint as when they want. So, but I think uh, when uh, artists make art as a career, it is very much to, uh, it is very much important to cultivate discipline and uphold trustworthiness because artists are the brand ambassadors of the works. So let's say when someone engage you or me, um, artist, um, our work, um, the person is actually putting trust in us. And so, uh, it is uh, very important for us to uphold trustworthiness, which means when I work with um, important clients, um, without them asking me to, uh, to refrain from posting or anything or to, to uh, refrain from sharing with people um, my, my, who my clients are, uh, I will know that uh, I do not share with uh, anyone. Um, without their consent. And uh, I will not show the works that I have done for them. They have commissioned me uh, to anyone or on any platform without their consent. So because I feel that uh, mainly I work uh, with portraiture. So um, it is, um, I, I try to engage an art gallery to represent my work. And uh, what happened was, uh, the person said uh, it was very difficult for her to sell my works because um, I only paint when um, my clients look for me. And uh, I do not have too many paintings on hand. Um, I, I do paint when I'm free, but uh, usually uh, I paint uh, when clients commission me. So in this case, uh, I am a, an a when we have a middle person, the client uh, would actually prefer to engage, to deal with me directly as the artist because uh, I think doing portraiture is something different because the client would think that um, uh, portraiture when you paint him or when you paint his family, it is something very private. So, uh, so my clients, I, I mean, like I feel that there are other clients who who also like to work uh, in other ways. But so far my clients, uh, they prefer to deal directly with me. And uh, that is also why uh, it is very important for me to, to not uh, share anything. Although some are quite tempting to share, but um, I feel, yeah, uh, to, to not share anything without your consent. And also to cultivate discipline in a way like uh, when I say I will deliver this on this date, then uh, I would, uh, arrive in Beijing a day before that date to deliver the paintings or um, a day before uh, to deliver the paintings in Singapore. So I feel that uh, that is how I can um, hold uh, 
engage my clients in the seven years of my career. And uh, showcase your works and grow your market, build your network and raise your net worth. So I feel that um, the, the more people that we engage and um, the, the more people that we know, because uh, I travel to Italy a lot, uh, mainly because I'm attracted to the, uh, the, the art market there. I find it very fascinating. Uh, so uh, for me, is uh, I feel sometimes it's good to, to explore, to, to branch out and build my presence because uh, rather than waiting for people to come to know me in Brunei, uh, I feel, no, it's okay, you know, I'll just travel to Singapore, I'll just travel to Italy. Uh, I remember the first time when I went to Italy, I did not speak any Italian word, but I went to the uh, art fair, it was quite a big one, because at that time I just thought Italians also speak English, but uh, Rather, I found out it was not quite the case. Uh, they do speak, but uh, of course, if you're going to go more in depth, then um, you will need to speak Italian. So, but I feel that that was a right thing that I did at that time, because when I went there, I went to the um, markets, uh, art markets, uh, art fairs, where um, mostly Italians um, uh, are there. And then, uh, so I, I found this strategy that uh, I can be seen um, much more easily. And uh, I get to talk to the people who are quite uh, senior in the art industry, even though I did not speak very well at that time, but I felt it was good to, to, to make my presence. And this is what I also uh, strongly believe that uh, because I do not like to put all the eggs in one basket. So uh, actually I do have more clients in Singapore than in Brunei. But my Brunei base is growing because the past two years I've been based in Brunei and I haven't gone anywhere. So, but I feel that uh, to me, that's not enough. And, um, and of course, because I like to travel, that's part of me. Um, so, so when I went to Italy, so now I do have contacts in Italy. And what is great about this was uh, from the art fairs I had, that I had attended in the past. Uh, now, uh, five years later, uh, we uh, are able to collaborate and bring something new to Southeast Asia. In fact, uh, two years ago, my Italian partners and me, uh, we uh, had the, um, exhibition of Amidio Modigliani and of uh, Morandi and uh, all these um, great masters of history. So uh, that wouldn't happen had I not traveled to Italy. And uh, so I thought uh, branch out and build your presence is very important. Uh, of course, uh, collaborate or create your online of merchandise if uh, it is um, if it is okay, we can create our own merchandise as well. Uh, which we are going to look to collaboration. So grow your brand awareness through collaboration. So when my brand is my work, how am I going to grow? So now I'm also looking at art as, uh, as, as a strategist. So uh, I have been um, into this uh, latest news um, it's like uh, nowadays, yeah, like a uh, collaboration sector. Like, uh, if you see the top picture here, the shoes, uh, it is Nike uh, collaborated with uh, Hong Kong actor and singer Edison Chen. So uh, you can see that there are actually traditional elements in these shoes. So it is more of a, so when people say uh, tradition, uh, traditional artworks are not uh, viable, but uh, that's not exactly the case all the time, because now modern things, they also uh, embrace and fuse into traditional things uh, to, come, to come up with something as of like a East Miss West or fusion of uh, both modernism and tradition. So if you can see this, uh, the front part is actually the marginal artwork. And then the bottom part is the foot reflexology. And who would have thought 
of uh, applying this into a sport, a pair of sport shoes of Nike, but it does happen collaborations. And of course, uh, the latest one, um, Gucci collaborated with uh, Balenciaga, but uh, they wouldn't call it a collaboration. They say uh, Gucci hacked Balenciaga, but uh, actually it is just all marketing. So in fact, um, you see the, the woman, the handbag that she carries, um, it's actually a Gucci handbag, but uh, it has Balenciaga written all over it. So I feel uh, sometimes as a brand um, ambassador of, let's say, uh, as an artist with our own artwork, uh, there are other times we can grow our market through collaborations of someone we think uh, we can um, work with or on par with our um, status or higher. Uh, in, in order to, to collaborate, uh, to make an impact. Of course, uh, I'm also very um, um, encouraged to make friends who think outside of the box, uh, which uh, I'm showing you the beer bottles of these. Um, these artworks are done by my friend uh, who is an Italian artist. So on his canvas, he painted, uh, he has been painting all this. This is his style. And, and uh, he collaborated with uh, uh, a drink uh, company in order to have his uh, artworks printed on all the types of bottles of the, the beverage. Now, I'm also very careful with uh, collaboration because uh, I have also seen um, someone, uh, I've also seen artists who had the um, artworks um, printed on pampers and toilet paper, which I think um, maybe we can, the artist can give a second thought of this. So, so at the end of the day, even through collaboration, it's like a how we want to be, uh, how we want our work to, to be perceived, because after all, we are also representing our own brand. And of course, uh, now um, people also grow brand awareness through merchandise like G Clays or Art Prints. Uh, well, G Clays are quite um, popular nowadays. It's a 20 over year old um, technology, uh, but uh, it's said that um, G Clays can last for 200 years. So, in fact, uh, some investors who buy paintings. Uh, there are also investors who actually um, buy G clays. And of course, uh, through merchandise is uh, like what I did. Uh, I came up with my poetry and painting and storybook uh, in Mandarin and in Chinese and in English. And of course, um, I do have investors who ask me if I would like to design something for, for a scarf collection. But uh, right now, because of uh, I am quite occupied with my paintings, but uh, this is something that I would like to look into in the near future. So uh, this would be merchandise. So that's a big difference about collaboration with collaboration and merchandise. But of course, uh, through merchandise, uh, like uh, we can always look for investors or if uh, we can, uh, we can just uh, self-sponsor. Uh, but of course, like through collaboration, it is different. Definitely there will be investors. So uh, stay in the know is also what I like to do because I feel that uh, when I access to information, not just painting. Uh, so sometimes uh, when I speak to clients, um, they might not be so, it's like, oh, every time I see Hui Feng, she speaks about art. So I feel like uh, sometimes I also get access to information which uh, many might not uh, have. Uh, because I feel that my knowledge will complement what I do. And uh, for example, because I also, uh, some of my clients are also politicians and diplomats. So uh, it is very important for me to know that, uh, to know something about politics, but um, just uh, to get the conversation flowing. But of course, as an artist, I don't speak deeply about politics, but it is good to know because sometimes uh, at certain gatherings, you know what topics to, um, to not talk about, you know, what topics are sensitive and things like that. 
So I feel that my knowledge will complement what I do, not mainly my knowledge of knowing something to talk about, but it is also my knowledge of knowing something not to talk about uh, in certain times. But um, I also like to invest, uh, I feel it is good also to invest in um, some art knowledge outside of uh, my comfort zone, which is uh, about um, digital art. Well, I'm not, I'm not an expert in digi uh, digital art, but it is good to know something about it because um, the, the world is changing. There are all types of um, creativity uh, springing and uh, there is a market for everything. And I feel uh, if uh, the artist just uh, stays in that comfortable zone, um, maybe that artist is putting all the eggs in one basket. So I feel uh, to know something outside, like to know creativity outside of what we usually do is good because uh, it opens uh, other possibilities and it creates potential. Um, as well as um, I also feel um, engaged with my clients, be loyal in a way. Um, I have worked with uh, TCM, traditional Chinese um, medicine um, institution in Singapore. Um, I've, I've been working with them for a few years. And uh, at one time, uh, when my painting was presented to the president uh, in one occasion during that, um, in one occasion, after that event, uh, another agent actually looked for me and uh, she said uh, she also represented another TCM. And she also wanted to do the same thing, uh, but uh, she would pay me uh, in advance and whatever they do with my paintings is, uh, is, um, is your own choice. Um, of course, that was tempting, but I felt uh, I shouldn't, I should, be loyal to my current client. I shouldn't be working with the competitor. And so a lot of times uh, it is good to, to, I think not a lot of times, I think <laughs> every time it is good to be loyal. So uh, after that, I turned down the, um, the, the person. And uh, since then I have never heard from her. But I feel that um, loyalty pays uh, in every way because even though my client is not aware of it, but one thing is uh, I know I know that this when my client engages me, this is the quality, this is the loyalty my client will uh, get from me, and this is my branding. So I think the artist, uh, the the branding, the character, uh, the branding, the um, and the, the, the character defines your branding and do not oversell in a way. Um, there are also times when a client says uh, he wants to paint. Uh, there's one time this client actually wanted to commission me to paint uh, his late father. But he told me there was a hiccup because his wife was... <laughs> His wife was not familiar with, uh, was not comfortable with uh, someone uh, with a portrait in the home. So usually in this case, I, I actually in, in every occasion, there are two choices. There, there's, there are always two choices. One is I go ahead and hard sell. No, you know what? I think it is very important that you, you commission me to paint your late father and I sell him the value. Uh, in doing so. But another choice is I can say, yeah, I think uh, if uh, your other half does not feel comfortable with the portraiture in the home, I feel she is right because uh, the home is a very personal space. And I think uh, uh, you, you should listen to him, I told my client. Uh, you should listen to her. So uh, at that 
point, even though I don't sell my painting, but I feel I somehow um, have helped with um, maintaining some harmony in someone's home. And I feel uh, that is also something to do with authenticity, uh, uh, to, to my authenticity as an artist, not to only make money of my clients, but to actually listen to them, uh, listen to, to, uh, to the problem, uh, not quite a problem, but listen to the situation in this case and just respect. Because uh, if I have made the wife upset, I would eventually make two persons upset, which is the wife and the husband. And that is not what I want to do. Uh, because in the end, uh, they will come back to me, then they stop talking to me, and then that's, that's the end. So that's not what I want. So sometimes it's rather good to, to not engage in any business, but to maintain that um, trustworthiness. Um, invest in myself, yes, and um, invent a distinct style. So I think invest in ourselves, especially artists, is very important. Uh, again, it goes back to when you invest in yourself and when you expand um, your comfort zone, when you go into unknown territories, unknown art markets, just to keep, just to make contacts. I feel that is very important because um, back to what I mentioned earlier, uh, invest in yourself uh, so that we don't put all the eggs in one basket. And from doing so, um, we would uh, become better. Um, and uh, also uh, when, when, we, when we have this knowledge of, of a lot of things uh, quite related to our work, but not directly, uh, then it would be good because uh, that means our understanding of certain things of specific, um, in specific areas uh, on specific topics will allow us to grow. And that is uh, an investment for the artist because when we, um, when we gain this mass of knowledge, we do not paint as we used to uh, because when artists paint, we paint part of ourselves. Um, the strokes and um, the strength in the application, everything will be different when we grow. And so in this case, uh, it is very important that after that time, we invent our distinct style. And distinct style, the, is, distinct style is very important um, especially for artists, because when collectors uh, buy, uh, some, uh, buy an artist's painting, uh, style, distinct style is what um, they like to, uh, distinct style is what they connect with a, a certain artist. So be recognizable with your style and uh, do not copy. And uh, I will come into some art appreciation uh, right after this, uh, in order to talk about um, distinct style. So, um, this is um, artist uh, who is uh, very uh, who was uh, this late artist is very popular in the Italy art market, Lucio Fontana, and I think uh, this art is not. Um, It's not uh, new to a lot of people. Now, uh, this artwork is his distinct style by cutting through the canvas or by uh, making a hole through the canvas is Lucio Fontana's distinct style. Um, and his works, are sold for millions. Why? Because Lucio was the first to create it, to create this type of art. When everyone was painting on the canvas um, in the 40, uh, 40s, um, Lucio already cut through the canvas. So this itself 
was not just a distinct style of Lucio Fontana, but it's also a story in time because um, it was something that no one had done before in that time. And of course, uh, when you want to invent your distinct style, be the first to do so because after someone has done it, and then the second one, the third one, however you cut the canvas, your work will not be sold um, at a high price because uh, someone has already done it in the first place. And um, yeah, so on to distinct style is another one, Fernando Botero, a Colombian artist whose works are very much sought after around the world as well. And um, so if you can see distinct style of Fernando is round, fullness, big. So, uh, and I have seen uh, sculptures in Singapore, the big bird um, near the river uh, at Raffles Place, as well as at the Parkview City, am I right? Yeah. So if, if you see his paintings and his sculptures, um, Anyone who see this will know that this is Botero's work. So this is how uh, collectors would like to keep, uh, collectors uh, look into a distinct style of an artist. So if an artist is here and there, and um, the styles are here and there as well. So when the artist's work is exhibited or displayed, uh, nobody can tell uh, like exactly whose work is that. So that would lose a lot of the magic. So uh, yeah, so as an artist, it is very important to create a distinct style. We can evolve from there, but nonetheless, this distinct style is what uh, collectors and investors uh, would recognize us of. Vincenzo Balsamo, this is a, a late father of my friend. Um, so you can see his distinct style. He is a, he used to be a traditional artist as he started out during his younger days. But uh, as he evolved, he moved into a little bit of cubism, but it's more of a distortion of cubism. So when people mention Vincenzo Balsamo, people would know what type his works are. And so that gives the oomph. Luca Alinari, um, the late Luca Alinari had passed away two years ago. Uh, this was when I was in Italy to attend his exhibition. Again, distinct style. Uh, his colors are amazing and um, so vibrant that it is uh, rarely seen in a lot of artworks by other artists. So this is his distinct style. And not just that, because um, he, his paintings um, re revolve around fantasy. Like, like a fantasy where you see his paintings, it's like a, you walk into a fantasy land uh, where the, the hills are pink and you know, the, uh, it's, it's a fantasy, but at the same time, it's very welcoming through his um, distinctive vibrant colors. So um, this is one of the things that we don't see other people copying him uh, because uh, he has made his mark uh, in, in this style. Another late artist uh, of Penang, uh, Datuk Chua Tien Teng, uh, also my friend's um, late grandfather, uh, was how he painted, how he was the first one in Malaysia, back in the 50s, uh, the first one to paint uh, this figurative uh, on batik. So again, he was the first one. Of course, now when we went to the um, art market in KL, uh, a lot of people do that. Uh, of course, they, uh, their works are amazing. Uh, but then again, the first who did that was Datuk Chua. And uh, his works uh, can now be sold for over uh, like a six figure. Yeah, so because he's the first one. 
And of course, uh, from um, west to east, um, the rule applies uh, in venture distinct style, just as Xu Pei Hong, the late Xu Pei Hong, uh, where he was very renowned for his horses. But of course, uh, with other paintings as well, but his horses were just amazing and um, nobody could compete. So no matter where the art world is, uh, always, always, um, it is important to create our own distinct style. Now, um, during my art career, I have also come across um, conversations with clients whereby they um, asked me, um, should they buy certain painting or should they? So I, I feel very honored that they would seek my um, opinion um, in the acquisition of a new artwork. And so this is when a, few, a couple of years back, uh, this is when um, I um, dived into uh, knowing a little bit about investing in art through my clients. But of course, there are other um, new clients as well when they would say, but how do I start investing in art? Uh, it is a good thing. I feel uh, when I have uh, two different types of clients because uh, one type is uh, they are already collecting artworks uh, in terms of, of course, of, uh, because they, they like the collections, um, they keep, but of course, uh, in a way, they are also investing in it. And uh, another uh, type of clients who, 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 who are interested and encouraged to, to go into this um, new area. So how do I start investing in art when they ask? And uh, these are some pointers that um, I would share with them. Uh, first of all, always consider that your collection is your asset. Um, no matter uh, any painting that you um, purchase, uh, it is always your asset. Now, of course, uh, how to invest in art is um, quite um, straightforward. Begin with the first painting, but always always collect within the means of your finances. I mean, um, of course, uh, when, we first, uh, when we begin with our first painting in our collection, uh, we do not think of wanting to make some money out of it right away. Uh, it is because we, first of all, we must um, like that particular painting that we purchase, uh, that we collect, because after all, uh, it is not just about art investment, but it is also about uh, uh, keeping it. Um, and so uh, it's good to buy to to begin some uh, to begin with something that uh, you like, plus uh, within your comfort zone. So if you're comfortable with, with two thousand, then just start with two thousand. If you're comfortable with one thousand, just start with one thousand. Yeah, be comfortable and do not get into debt um, by collecting. Mm -hmm. And also study the growth of the artist because uh, if the artist remains actively growing, so uh, potentially will be his market. Because when the demands for the artist works grow, uh, you will likely be able to sell the artist's painting in hand at a higher price. Uh, so the growth of the artist is also very important. Now, um, in my career and uh, from different countries, I also have come across uh, two types of artist friends. Some artist friends that are really disciplined, uh, they paint uh, almost every day and into the 70s and early 80s, they will still um, be exhibiting. Uh, and of course, uh, I also have a set of uh, friends artist friends who would paint uh, not as frequent and thus um, they do not exhibit quite widely uh, because I feel like when the when the momentum is not there 
then uh, it is quite a, a straightforward knowledge that uh, if you work, uh, if you don't work hard, then of course uh, your 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 market doesn't grow. So uh, the growth of the artist is very important. Um, of course, uh, proof authentication through provenance. So uh, I think this is where something um, like the NFT currently is also applying. Like uh, when you um, purchase an, F, uh, an NFT work, you would uh, there there will be data of provenance of the, the originality of the paintings and uh, who are the owners. So actually, this is not something new, but of course, it is uh, under a new format, which is interesting, which is good, uh, which is great for the diversification of the art market because uh, it is actually good for collectors because they don't just have one way; they actually now have another way uh, to invest. So now talk about provenance is um, now a lot of um, uh, there are a lot of um, court cases whereby uh, sometimes there are disputes over certain artworks um, by two parties uh, because of provenance, uh, because of the originality of certain work. And often case in court, um, it is very difficult to pass a judgment because first of all, lawyers are not art collectors. So lawyers have their own job scope. And so when they go into uh, an, uh, an art uh, case, then they would uh, still have to hire art experts from different fields in order to uh, examine the provenance and, and pass the value of the artwork. So a lot of cases, uh, it is a very difficult case. And uh, so art experts would actually advise, like, of course, uh, they are also, we are talking, uh, this, this is like really high prices, yeah? Uh, so uh, we are talking about these artworks um, whereby uh, uh, own family is fighting over and things like that. So it's really difficult. So for one thing is, however, uh, in the, the, the normal range market, uh, always, always uh, um, per, uh, purchase with the artwork's originality. And it is very important that if you like investors, uh, they would have plans to sell the artworks in the future, can be decades later, can be years later, uh, it doesn't matter, but as, as long as you as an investor would uh, look at it as uh, I purchased this painting for investment. That means you definitely will sell it uh, one day. That's in your plan. So the originality of the artwork is very important. And um, because uh, the next time you sell, uh, then it is good because uh, then you can, you already have proof uh, to, uh, to show the value. Uh, but of course, uh, if right now you purchase something and you don't seek provenance, then what more to say decades later, it will be so much more difficult to, to seek provenance than, than now. So always, always proof authentication through provenance. And keep cash in the form of art. So uh, why invest in art? Because uh, a lot of things, they are inflation. So uh, when you invest cash into art, there will be growth over time. And when you sell it, you will gain cash in folds uh, if you make a good choice in the art that is. So let's say um, it's like this, um, during the financial crisis um, that uh, a decade ago, I think in Europe, uh, a lot of industries fell but not the art industry. Uh, why? Because uh, when there is a cash, uh, when there is a financial crisis, uh, what happened to those people with cash in hand? They, it is very easy to invest those cash into something because uh, that means um, uh, when you invest something into art, let's say in that case, uh, first you, you keep your cash, but in the form of art. And 
Of course, it, it is just an investment in property or in cheeses or in premium wines. Um, but you know that the value of art grows. So when you have that value, uh, uh, when you have that cash in the form of art, uh, it is also uh, very safe in a way because uh, art is something that you can carry with you wherever you go. You know, you just uh, remove it from the frame and then just roll it and put it into the tube, voila, there you go. Uh, but of course, if you invest in wines and cheeses, uh, these, these are kept in factories for years, for decades, and these are not something that you can see or you can you know, feel in your hand whenever you feel like it. And of course, uh, property is something different, but nonetheless, um, uh, property, of course, uh, sometimes you don't have to wait for decades. Sometimes you can just uh, uh, sell it uh, and make, uh, make double fold uh, in two, three years time in some places. But um, I would say uh, that is different because um, investing in property is also something to consider about the, uh, the safety of the country. Uh, yes, it is safe now, but what about uh, 10 years from now? How will it be? And things like that. But of course, I'm not going into this. I'm just making comparison and uh, to say why uh, some investors would rather invest in, in art. And so, of course, I'll uh, be patient. Um, you see, uh, when people invest in wines, um, like uh, they actually don't invest it for themselves. They invest it for the children because wines like you know, uh, 20 years, 15 years is different. Uh, it's a different price. So it's like they start um, uh, investing now and then 15 years, 20 years, this collection of wines uh, became, uh, would become the uh, be belonging to the next generation. And of course, art is something like that as well. But of course, art in a way like I, I have seen uh, some galleries, they do have um, investment portfolio whereby um, they give, um, for, for example, like uh, if they ask the client, if they advise the client to invest in their portfolio of their own artists, um, they would usually advise like maybe a 30,000. Uh, so you purchase that portfolio of different artists whereby they will mix and match the artists. Uh, according to their professional uh, knowledge. And what happened is, um, of course, uh, they, were, they, they were also advised, uh, like uh, only invest in, your, in the comfort of your finances. So this is like uh, how, how they make uh, the returns of investment is through, uh, if they're able to sell, that's good uh, because they will know that which artists uh, have the potential of growth. Uh, which uh, so so because when they are in the market, it is good uh, because they can give the expert advice, and also uh, when they have the connection, they can also rent the art pieces. So when you invest a portfolio, it doesn't necessarily mean that you own uh, you have the paintings in your home. You own the paintings, but rather the paintings are kept in the gallery uh, to for them to run uh, as per the. Uh, profession, uh, professionalism, yeah. So, yeah, that is what I share today. And uh, you can get in touch with me. Those are my partners from Italy and from Malta. Um, yeah, thank you so much. So I'll stop share and uh, Q&A, thank you. Hey, hi, Nina. <laughs>